We've got to tr create a true culture of preparedness in this country that does not exist. We're nowhere close to being prepared. Two, we've got to do a lot more work to ready the nation for catastrophic disasters, particularly the earthquakes, the low to no notice events. I was just speaking to some folks from, from San Francisco. Uh, New Madrid, Cascadia, Wasatch, California, all of those faults. When they untrigger, when they trigger and they go off, FEMA's not a first responder. We don't move at the speed of light and just drop in commodities and, and people out of, the, you know, out of the sky. That's not how this works. It could take us days to get forward, and what I'm trying to do is be very upfront and honest about what preparedness needs to look like when it comes to that locally executed, state-managed, federally supported model. Each community should have its own ability to run commodity for commodities such as food and water and hygiene kits in each of their local communities to a certain degree. Each state should have a robust capability. They need to be able to buy me 48 to 72 hours worth of time for specifically large-scale earthquakes because it, it's hard for the federal government to move massive amounts of equipment at the speed of light if it goes off right now. So I'm in this job. I'm not here to you know, pursue a career in Washington, D.C. I'd happily go home to North Carolina. But I am going to talk honestly about where we are in a country right now when it comes to preparedness and getting ready. The next thing is, is reduce the complexity, Annie. We hand out billions and billions of dollars. I'm going to basically, as a result of last year, manage the distribution of 80 to $88 billion. That's how much money I deal with. During 2017, we were putting $300 million a day to work in an effort to help people. We put out $23 billion to just Harvey, Irma, Maria alone, and half of that money has already gone to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is going to get 40 or $50 billion additional dollars. Puerto Rico's never had a better opportunity than now to rebuild, be more resilient, and economically viable. But I'm not the person to tell Puerto Rico how to do it. You are. Where are the ideas? How, what's the system that I use that takes 40 billion bucks and says, here's what you should do with that money in the case of Puerto Rico, or several billion to rebuild the Virgin Islands? Emergency managers are never taught to how to generate sales tax revenue in a community that's been devastated by storms, okay? That's the private sector. I need those systems. I need that intelligence, Andy. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to one thing before we get going, and I want to open this back oh, up yeah. to have a real conversation, the culture of preparedness piece bothers me the most. You are the true first responder, not your local police officer, not your local fire department, not your EMS. One in four of you is going to do CPR in your lifetime. If you haven't already, how many have already had to perform CPR? Cool. All right. The rest of you better figure out how to get first aid, okay? The other thing that's killing our country is what's called asset poverty. It's not poverty, not I don't make enough money to live in my community. That's one part of the problem that FEMA deals with. The asset poverty piece that's killing us is that 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So when we have ready campaigns that say, go be ready, buy three days, three to five days worth of supplies and stockpile this, it never gets done because it's become an unrealistic financial ask. For, for low income households? No, no, no. These are people that make six figure salaries that drive the right car, or live in the right house. And you know what they do? They pay off their home in California, particularly those who are struggling in retirement to make ends meet, they'll pay off their home like they did in California, and then they'll let their fire insurance lapse and then their home burns down, and then it becomes my problem. That problem is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The lack of building codes and land use planning is killing this country daily when it comes to the amount of disasters it put forward. The built environment probably causes a third of the flooding that we've seen over the last year. Just the newly built environment, because local elected officials never win elections by saying, I would love to pass building codes. That's right. So when it comes to the first true responder, let's, let's talk about the statistics. The other thing that we're not doing in this country is being analytical. Let's take, let's take school shootings. Go look at the FBI statistics. Over half of the events are going to begin and end before police even get on scene. Did you know that? So how are we retraining our teachers to understand that, that they are the first true responder? 
that the likelihood of me getting on scene is not going to happen. Here's what I need you to specifically do. So do we incorporate that into our training and exercise? The riots that occur in communities because of like Baltimore and different things. Um, what if we look at it differently? What if raising that community's collective credit score keeps that community from ever having a riot and a civil disturbance because you go from a renter to a homeowner, you now have ownership in that community? What if you got the, 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 the Baltimore, the communities that rioted recently in Baltimore, that, that credit score collectively above 700? I bet you'd cut it all out.